Hello there, Sarah from 17 once again. This is the final section in my overview of my time with the Dark Souls 2 E3 build demo. I played it at the Play Expo in Manchester 2013. It was yesterday for anybody wanting to know how recently. And on my first playthrough, on my first session with the game, I said I was going to learn the controls, I was going to get used to it, and I wasn't going to touch the Mirror Knight. And I lied to myself, apparently, because I got all competitive at the hopes of seeing I could beat the boss, and I ran to the, the door immediately. And, and, yeah, there you go, Mirror Knight time. So I went through the fog, it was there in front of me, and we started to fight, and I noticed a lot about this boss. This boss is tough. This boss is really tough. He's fast, he's aggressive, he does mad damage, he can summon the, the little dude that we all know about. There's, I think, three versions of little dudes he can summon. He is... The, the closest I can come... Is... The closest I can compare him to anything in Dark Souls, he is... He fights like Artorius. Imagine the aggression of Artorius on a build where you feasibly can't roll on a mid-roll build where there's barely any iframes in your roll so rolling almost always gets you hit unless you do it perfectly and the timing on some of the attacks is really difficult to just you know to blindly sight evade because you still seem to, to get hit imagine that imagine having a shield where you can take three of Artorius's hits before it guard breaks you and then imagine when you hit him with your great sword or wherever your big sword is, one-handed, you do a hundred damage on a life bar that looks like it's maybe three thousand life, something like that. Like you barely take off a centimeter when you hit him for a hundred damage. It's it's really really noticeable, and and that's the Mirror Knight. The only difference, once again, is he has a shield that if you attack from right to left and you hit the shield, you will do zero damage and you will recoil off it opening yourself up for mad damage on his on his repost type deal. His combos and his attacks are all pretty simple stuff. He has a three hit combo that can sometimes be a one hit, can sometimes be a two hit. It's completely situational and AI dependent. We've seen this before. A lot of bosses have had this in the Dark Souls series. He has two attacks at a distance that involve his sword. One of them is a jump attack, which is identical almost, I feel, to Artorius's jump attack. His second one is a running stab, which is a lot like the Dark Wraith animation. You know the Dark Wraith when they run at you and they do their stab? It's exactly like that, but imagine it in, in wicked boss form, like huge dude doing it. He does that, which you can immediately follow up with a combo. His three hit combo, there's two different variants of it. There's one which just looks like normal swipes, and then there's another one where he finishes with a like a Rickard's Rapier poke at the end, which has got a lot of range, and it looks kinda camp when he does it. It's it's really like, you know, gentlemanly and, and you know, Marquis of Queensbury rules and crazy mustaches. Which is pretty funny to see. Then he does his really over exaggerated drop the shield in the ground where he summons a guy. And then he has his lightning attacks. So, his lightning attacks are telegraphed massively. He puts his sword in the air, lightning strikes it, and then he'll do one of three things. He does uh, kind of like a, a roundhouse swing with the sword, which has uh, an area of invisible influence where you take full damage from it. Think Stray Demon, when he puts his hand out and he has that big emission. The only difference here is you can't see it. So it's similar to say the, the Four Kings' projectile when it disappears, it's like that. It's invisible area of influence past his initial swing. The problem is, when he puts his sword in the air he can do one of three things, so you never know what they are and they're all very similar animations. The first one is the one I mentioned, the second one is identical to that swing, but instead it fires lightning at you, and it fires it in a, in a formation, it's like a phalanx of lightning where there's gap, lightning, gap, lightning, gap. and. Uh, it covers quite a wide distance. If you only get hit by one of them, it does a very small amount of damage. If you're closer, it probably does a lot more, but at distance, it's not too bad. And then his final one is, is probably the most deadly one. He puts the sword in the air, and then he does his big twirl, but instead of doing the two before, he hits it down on the ground, and it's like the big dragon sword. It does a directional line of energy, of, of electricity, and it's fast. It's really fast. And on my first few attempts at him, 
I was trying to roll. I said I'm going to try to roll to see if I can get some timings, to see if I can, you know, roll through attacks. I rolled through maybe uh, one third of the attacks I tried to evade. Because it's just, it's so different, guys. There's... Like you look, it looks like a perfect roll, and you've taken one third of your life's damage, and you, you might have just even flinched, like there were times when I didn't even flinch like I'd been hit, I just took damage, like really big damage too, like I'd poised through the hit, and still taken the full brunt of it, so there was a, a one attempt I took against him in my session, where I went into the room, and I was fighting him, I was, you know, looking for my opportunities, I would wait for him to attack, see that he didn't do the three hit combo, say if it was just the one hit combo, then I would hit him once and immediately get my shield back up and, and try and do some things like that. I was spacing him as best as I could to get him to either jump or do the lightning attack, because the rhythm that I had was when he did the lightning attack, instead of attacking him, which some people were doing and some people were doing quite effectively, I would back up and heal, because it was a guaranteed opportunity to get your life back. So. If he did the lightning, I could heal. If he did the jump attack, I could evade it by strafing to the left. I could two-hand my sword and I could hit him with a big two-handed strike, which only missed a few times for me, thank God, but the, the lock-on didn't help with that. And if you landed it right, you did 500 to 700 damage, depending on whether or not you know, it was counter damage, which was only about an inch on a really big bar, but it still was enough. And on that particular fight, he did the jump attack, I was evading circling to the left with my shield up, and he did the exact same thing that Artorius can do when he jumps. He landed behind me, a good foot away from me, and he killed me with a dead angle attack. That's all it could have been. It was like a... I didn't have full life and it insta-killed me. Didn't even touch me. Anybody who saw that can agree, never touched me, but this is Dark Souls. I know this kind of thing happens, you've just got to take it. Another time, he summoned the little dude, and I was having troubles with the lock-on because I couldn't remember what button swapped locks. So I was disengaging lock and reinitiating it, and it kind of got me in trouble. And as I was backing up, I backed up into a pillar, which made the camera go up my ass. And the, the mirror knight and his little dude were just, you know, pushing towards me, getting ready to attack. And all I could see was my dude's fat head. So I was dead. I was trying to roll, and my shield up and stuff. I was just dead, like pff, dead, flattened down. I think I died. Uh, about four or five times against him and then I was fighting him uh, when, I, when I'd run back down the corridor and the tactic that I was getting was when when he was going to put his shield down you can hit him you can hit him but it does about a hundred damage and every so often it won't do any damage you'll just get an iframe for it and it doesn't make any sense there were times when I hit this boss and it didn't do anything like every time he swung me Except for once where he missed. He did a thrusting attack and it went past me. And then I managed to get a really nice counter hit on him. Aside from that, he hit me with everything, even when it didn't hit me. Yet I swing at him and he was getting iframes. You know, you could bounce off the shield, so I always recommend attacking from left to right rather than the other. After the jump attack, I moved to the left. You know, I counted on it and things like that. When I did attack him, I tried to always go into two hand so that I could do the two hand strong attack to get a little extra damage. And immediately afterwards, I would hold block, you know, tr hold back on the analog, hold block, just to get the sword back up to try and stop me from taking a hit. I never managed to block it successfully, unless the Mirror Knight was slightly slower than normal, because it would always hit you regardless. And something I noticed was, when I'd go into two-handed and I'd hit the boss, and then I'd go to, you know, I have a shield, or come out of two-handed to shield with my, my actual shield, there were times where I wasn't two-handing and I, was, I had my shield up. So I'd gone to two hand, I'd done an attack, I'd come back blocking and I had my shield on. And I couldn't understand it. And it makes me think of, because this happens in Dark Souls, perhaps I'd gone to do the input to, to two hand, but I'd pressed attack too quickly and it had cancelled that input. You know, I'd buffered a, an attack input which took priority. I'm not too sure, guys. But a handful of times I noticed I was trying to two hand and it was taking forever to do it. I was trying to come out of it, it was taking forever to do it. And in the heat of battle, you know, Half a second is an eternity. So I was really noticing things, and the one thing I noticed the most, especially fighting the Mirror Knight, was the recovery on the hits. The big sword swings pretty quick, but it takes forever for it to go back to a, a state of normality before you can move, before you can attack, before you can defend. And you're so vulnerable, because the boss is so aggressive, he's constantly on you, he recovers really quickly, he strikes, you don't have any poise, of, of, or what it doesn't seem like any poise to, to really do much when it comes to tanking. And it gets 
to a point where your trading hits with him and his hits hurt significantly more than yours. So I got the boss's life down to about half life and what I was doing is when he summoned the, the minion I would hit him three times with either one handed or two handed standard attacks because I, I noticed that the two handed missed occasionally and sometimes it was too slow. So three hits with the standard attack and then I would back up and I would wait in front of his shield because when he pumps the enemy out it's not close to the shield it's a good meter and a half away from it so if you go to you know try and hit in front of the shield you'll miss the enemy and it'll be behind you. But I found out that if you're two-handing the sword, which I always did, I two-handed it and I waited, when he pops out the little dude, if you do the heavy attack, you will insta-kill the little guy, and then it's just you and the boss again. So he summoned three or four minions, and I killed all of them. And then afterwards, I'd get my shield back on, we'd engage again, you know, I'd go forward trying to eke out a pattern, trying to get him to attack and commit so I could punish and stuff. And it was taking a while, guys. It was, it was a good five to seven minute fight, and I got him down to... Like, the last two inches of his life, it was getting pretty fucking tense. And I'd used all my Estus flasks, I'd used um, a couple of the stones I'd picked up, and I had the the, the small stones I was using, because I noticed that because they give you health regen, they seem to be more useful for keeping in there and doing damage than the flask. The flask was kind of the get out of there when you get an opportunity and do the big heal. And I had full life, and he was going down, man. His life was super, super low. I'm talking, I knocked it down to about an inch, so small and he started doing the electricity attack with his sword in the air and I saw an opening so I two-handed the sword I did the attack just as he started doing his attack and he took no damage no damage at all I took 80% damage so I'd gone from this super comfortable position of winning to immediately like I'm gonna die I'm gonna cock this entire thing up there's no way I'm winning now because he's just gonna poke me and I'm screwed so I'm backing up, he's aggressive, he's been more aggressive than he's ever been in the entire fight, he's swinging, he's banging on the whole shield, he's guard breaking me, I'm rolling away from his next hit, and then I get the heal off. And as he comes for me again, you know, I tank it, he doesn't swing, I do swing, and he dies. And it's just that moment of, goodness me, the endorphins and everything just pushed, it flooded my sister. I took the, the, the headset off, did like a little fist in the air, and as I took the headset off, I could hear all the people cheering. <laughs> and I looked around and there was there was quite a crowd of people watching. There was a, a guy over the side, you know, with like taking pictures and stuff. And uh, the dude that was in charge of the, the booth, one of the dudes came over and like, oh, that was awesome type deal. And he brought me over to the, the guy who'd done the presentation, who did another kind of crazy mock presentation where he gave me the shirt and, you know, he addressed me as the the first person to do it at the convention and all this other stuff and it was great and and I went back later on in the day because that was my first session on the game I had a second session later where uh, I, I talked to him and I asked you know how, how it had been on day and stuff and apparently there were only two people that had beat the boss me and another guy and uh, the other guy had beaten him twice which you know, was pretty damn impressive um, to, to beat that boss because two people did it and all day there was a constant crowd and the building was open for like 10 hours and it was a constant crowd and there was thousands of people and there were only two guys that beat it. And he said to me, the guy, it was so funny because he was trying to get like a rivalry on. He's like, oh, you're going to have to up your game because someone else has beat him too. I was like, oh, that's, that's pretty cool. And he says, but on his first one, uh, the, the, the boss bugged and didn't move so he could just beat his tits off. So the, 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 the first person to beat it after me <laughs> smashed him while it weren't working, which I bet they were gutted at because there were so many people playing this demo, guys. You could see them. It was six screens filled with Mirror Knight. There was a, a friend of our group called, called Cleaver who got super close to winning. He had him down to like two inches left and it was so close and he got really unlucky and killed. Another guy got it down to about a millimetre and died so close. There was, there was a ton of it, but... It's a, it's a tough boss, guys, but it's tough because it's a, a, it's a new game. B, it doesn't work anything like Dark Souls. There's a lot of things that are against you because the boss is so much stronger than you are. You are so gimped compared to him. And I just don't understand how it's going to work in the main game because my logic is you're going to get there so much stronger and it's going to be much more manageable. Because as I was playing it, I was thinking, how the hell do you do this no damage? How the hell do you learn to evade this character? Because... He's so aggressive, he's so constant, there doesn't seem to be, you know, a safe way of fighting him or a cheesy way yet. And I just, it was it was kind of humbling to see this, this force of nature just destroy all these people so much. And then we, then I remembered, 
that little guy he's summoning is going to be a human player in the full release, so he has to be either toned down or they must have gimped the player character so much to make this demo, you know, as hard as possible to give it that, you know, that reputation of killing everybody, because it just doesn't seem like it's going to be possible. But at the same time, I'm so excited to try it and to see if I can do it, because it, it was just really, really interesting. But. You know, I tweeted back when I was watching the E3 footage that I could beat that guy, I knew I could beat him. And when I was fighting him and he killed me a few times, I was like, I can't beat this guy. But I did, and I know that anybody can beat that boss if they're patient enough. It's just, that build is, is so rough. Everything in it is an ambush, everything in it is going to kill you in three hits. There's so much stun locking happening, it's such a different game. But I couldn't be more excited to, to get my hands on it and... As I've mentioned, I didn't get into the beta, which has got, you know, delicious irony on that. There's another one opening up later on that's going to have more inhabitants, which I'm probably going to be able to play, but it's so far away and I want to play it now. You know, it's just, I'm so selfish and greedy, but I've had a taste, now I want more. Thank you for watching, guys. I hope this has you know, been enlightening to people who've not seen footage or anything and are interested. But as always, you take care now.